I am Anil Kumar sharing with you limits of piecewise functions. Let us evaluate limit for x square minus 1 divided by absolute x minus 1 where x approaches 1. Now it does not really look like a piecewise function but as you know whenever absolute function is involved we are always working with a piecewise function. So let me uh, get back to this uh, question. Let's first understand uh, what is absolute x minus 1 equal to. It is basically equals to x minus 1 if x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 and it's negative value of x minus 1 if x minus 1 is less than 0, right? Absolute value is always, always positive. So if you are getting somehow a negative value of inside term, you have to make negative of that to make it positive, which will be the case if I write minus 2 here, minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3. Absolute value of minus 3 is 3. That is because we make negative of minus 3. So I hope that step is absolutely clear. So let me rewrite this as uh, x minus 1. So I'm basically working on this inequality. Taking 1 to the right side, we get x is greater than or equal to 1. And it's minus of x minus 1 when x is less than 1. Taking this minus 1 to the right side. Okay. So that gives us the absolute value, the denominator part of this limit. And now what I can do here is we can rewrite this function uh, as a piecewise function, right? So, so we'll do that part. <coughs> so we'll write down this function as, uh, so it should be x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1, x minus 1, if x is greater than or equal to 1, right? So, so that is how the function is. I'm just writing the function. We'll write in limit form later. And, and it is equal to x square minus 1 divided by minus of x minus 1 when x is less than 1. Is that part clear? So I've just described this function as a piecewise function up to here. Now I'm going to rewrite the question itself. So, so what question we have here is, we have limit x approaches 1. So I'm rewriting this. So when I write x square minus 1, uh, x square minus 1 could be written as, okay, let's do one more step, uh, x plus 1 times x minus 1 divided by x minus 1, right, where x is greater than or equal to 1. So I'm factoring the numerator, uh, x plus 1 times x minus 1 over minus of x minus 1. Is it okay? When x is less than 1. Perfect. So this question could be written like this. Now at this stage, as you can see, x minus 1 can cancel out. So we could simplify uh, the question and say, uh, well, this limit could be equal to, uh, so let me take the limit inside, okay? So we say, well, now the limit is limit of x plus 1 when x is greater than or equal to 1, x approaches, approaches 1, we'll say from the positive side. Is it okay? That is because it is greater than or equal to 1. And we can also find limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side. And that is of minus x plus 1. Do you see that? When x approaches 1. Now, or you could say find the limit of this function when it approaches from positive and negative side. So basically what we will do here is that we'll find limits when we say positive side that is when x is greater than or equal to 1, right? That branch of piecewise function, this is from the negative side, correct? So if I substitute 1 here, what do I get? So the answer here is 1 plus 1 is 2. On the other hand, if I substitute 1 here, I get minus 2. Do you see that? So when x is greater than or equal to 1, when you are approaching from the right side, you are approaching 2. And from the left side, you are approaching minus 2. Do you see that? So that means the limit does not exist. Since these are not equal, we can say uh, since uh, limit, let me write here, limit when x approaches 1 from the negative side for the function f of x is not equal to limit when x approaches 1 from the positive side. We say that the limit of x when approaching 1 for the given function does not exist. Do you see that? 
So that is the answer. Now, once we are at this stage, or rather this stage, we could have sketched the function also, right? Let me sketch the function and explain the concept once again. Now what we have here is that when x is less than 1, left side, then it's minus x minus 1. So let's say this is 1 for us, right? This is 1 for us. So at 1, the function is not defined. So we know x is not equal to 1. So basically here, when I was writing this function, I should have not included 1 here since it is not really defined at 1. Perfect. So I should write not equal to 1. That's one correction. Okay. Now, if it is if it is um, 1, I mean, so we have a hole at this point, but if it is on the right side of 1, the equation is x plus 1. Do you see that? x plus 1. So, so at 1, the value is 1 plus 1, 2. So this is this is 1, this is 2. Then it's kind of like this, and the function is like this, right? Positive. On the other hand, if the value is less than 1, that means negative, right? So you get minus 2, and the slope is also negative. Do you see that? Negative of this. So, so if I write 0 here, then I get minus 1. Do you see that? So, so the slope here will be kind of like this. So that is the graph, and this one is a hole here. Now, this point is 1 for us. So what you observe here is that the limit, left side limit is, is minus 2, and the right side limit is plus 2. They are not same. We have a jump discontinuity, right? We have jump discontinuity. And in this case, limit at 1 does not exist. Do you get an idea? So that is how we can actually explain it using the graph, right? So, well, this is not a standard technique. I just took it inside. What you should do here is, once you redefine your function, you should separately find limit when you approach x from positive side and from the, I mean, from right side and from the left side, and show it that it is equals to plus 2 and minus 2. Since they are not the same, limit does not exist, right? So you should do like that actually. So, so this is uh, not a very standard or a good practice, let me say, uh, but it is kind of may just kind of help you to understand the process. I'm Anil Kumar, and I hope that helps. Feel free to post questions and share your views. Thank you, and all the best.